So we're going to discuss interest. So what exactly is interest? Well, interest is essentially the price you pay to borrow money or the price you charge to lend money. So what we mean about that is say you loan someone 100 rand and you loan it to them for a year. You don't have that 100 rand available for you to use for that year. So you're going to request interest that you compensated for the fact that you don't have that money at the time and they can use the money for whatever they need it for. So for example, if it's 100 rand and you say, okay, 10 rand extra when they're paid back. So in total, when they pay you back, it is 110 rand. That 10 rand is going to be the interest. And it's essentially a way of renting the money, like you rent your money to someone else so that they can use it kind of a situation, but not exactly. But that's like the, the broad idea of the concept. Now, usually when we discuss interest, we actually refer to interest as a percentage. So instead of saying like you will pay 10 rand for a year of having that 100 rand, you would talk about a percentage. So you'd be like 10% of the 100 rand. So that 10% is referred to as the interest rate. Now, your interest rate can be fixed or it can be floating. Fixed means it's going to stay the same for a duration of time and for your calculations, everything like that. Floating means there is a possibility of it changing dependent on certain conditions. There are also different kinds of interest rates, so such as real, nominal, effective, and annual. So what is nominal interest? So nominal interest is the stated interest rate of a bond or a loan, and it signifies the actual monetary price a borrower will pay a lender to use their money. You're like, okay, well, what does it actually mean? So it means, say, you have a nominal interest rate of 6%. Then you can expect to pay 6 grand for every 100 grand loaned. So that's what we mean by the actual monetary price a borrower will pay a lender to use their money. The real interest rate factors in inflation. So it's going to provide the investor a more accurate measure of their buying power or more accurate measure of, you know, how much they will get out of the investment. So say you loan something at six, the 6% 6 nominal interest that we spoke of earlier, but inflation is actually 4%. Then the real interest rate would be 2%. So what you're making out of an investment would actually only be 2% if you have to um, take into account inflation. And inflation is basically, you know how 100 grand three years ago was worth more than 100 grand now kind of thing. That's the inflation aspect of it. And by, what we mean by worth more, we're talking about the fact that you could buy more things for 100 grand three years ago than you could buy now. Okay, so the effective interest rate is the interest rate which takes compounding into account. Now, when we explain this, it will be easier to explain it using an example. And when we do the example, it will also show us the difference between the nominal interest rate and the effective interest rate. So we're going to use an example of we have a bond, which is 6%, compounded semi-annually. Now, before we get to the actual working out of everything, we need to discuss what does semi-annually mean. So semi-annually means twice a year. So at six months, interest will be given out. And then at the end of the year, interest is given out. But if it's compounded, it means the interest is reinvested. So you could almost see it as you could break up your problem into one part, which is the original principal, and then you earn interest on that. And then you have principal two, which is the original principal plus the interest. 
and that earns interest and you get the second lot of interest kind of like that and if we're going to do that let's do use just 100 rand as an example just so we can see the numbers so we invest 100 rand and we're just going to invest it for a year which means we're going to first need to work out how much interest we get at the end of six months or half a year so we're going to refer to that as i1 how do we work that out so it's six percent compounded semi-annually so six percent per annum but we only want to work out how much interest we get for half the year so how do we do that? Well, we say it's 6% per year. We only look in a half a year. So 6% divided by 2. So we have that 6% divided by 2, which is going to give us 3%. How do we work out the interest? Well, it's 100 times that 3% in decimal fraction notation, which is 0 0.03. So 3 divided by 100 is going to give you that 0 0.03. And that is going to give us 3. So the interest here is three rand. So at the end of six months, we get three rand interest on the hundred rand. Then what's happening is it's being reinvested. So 103 rand is going in for the next six months to get to that one year situation and when we get I2. So we again going to work it out. So now it's 103 times by the 0 0.03. It's still 0 0.03 because it's for half a year. So it's a 6% divided by 2. And that's going to give us 3.09. So now we have, we got 3 rand interest there and 3 rand and 9 cents interest there. So the overall interest for the year was six rand and nine cents. Now the six rand and nine cents will help us determine the annual effective interest. Because what we can do now is we can say, oh well, the annual effective interest is basically the 6.6 .6 rand and nine cents divided by 100, the 100 rand, times by 100 to get it to percentage. So we have that the effective interest, and I'm going to be very careful here and say the annual effective interest, is 6.09%. Now you can see the difference between the annual effective interest and the nominal interest. It doesn't look like a lot, and it would be different depending on, you know, your time periods or what your interest is, how many compounding periods you have is what I mean by your time periods. So the larger the amount of compounding periods, the greater the difference between the nominal interest rate and the effective interest rate. But overall, the effective interest rate builds in the compounding that's why it's 6.09, whereas the nominal interest rate does not build in the compounding. So we had to do it step by step there to get to the N um, approach. Well, we could use the compounding interest equation, but that's for another time. So nominal interest is just the blanket. Um, it's how you market or how the banks market the loans and bonds. 6% and then they do the compounding you know, in brackets, kind of a situation to let you know what's going on. Whereas the effective interest builds in the compounding. So it's already in the interest rate. Now, there's just one thing to be very careful about. And that is, you'd have seen our, I spoke about it being the annual effective interest. And I spoke about the effective interest. And then I spoke about the nominal interest rate. So the 0 0.03 is also technically classified as an effective interest rate. You notice 3% and 6.09%, that's different. There are different meanings between them. So when you talk about the effective interest rate, it's often you know, a situation of 
this is I2, and this is I2. Why do we call it I2? Because the time period is semi-annually, so it happens twice a year. So we, when we represent it, it's going to be the interest semi-annually. That's how we read it. And then you have the annual effective interest. That would be the interest annually. That would be an I1. So while they're both effective interest rates, it will be dependent on how it's structured. So the compounding period is built in, but it's also in the interest rate itself. But we will go over um, particularly the difference between the effective interest rate, the annual effective interest rate, and the nominal interest as we go through the different um, concepts. The last note, and it is an important one to keep in mind as we progress further, is that there is a difference between the annual effective interest rate and the equivalent effective interest rate, and what we just refer to as the effective interest rate. So just be very, very careful about that and take note of it as we progress through the videos and content. This 